Talking about music. That's what we do. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E dot net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 473 is with Robin Campbell and Matt Doyle from UB40. I'm good. I'm fun. Thank you. Well, we got to start off with you guys are going to be in Asheville on September 4th at the Salvage Station. I mean, my God, you guys coming to the Carolinas and being up there in the mountains and stuff, you could not ask for a better atmosphere. Great. We're looking forward to it. Looking forward to the whole tour, of course. Absolutely. And and, and this tour is just magnetic. I mean, everybody that's on board with this tour is just, I mean, th- this is what it's going to be all about. The, the concert that everybody's going to be talking about. If we don't have a nice vibe, oh, there's going to be something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing this tour together, I mean, I mean, we we all went through the lockdown together and stuff like that. But now you get to come out and, and it's, you know, it's the roaring 20s all over again. And you're part of that. Yeah, I mean, the last time we we were in the states was was uh, 2019, and that was immediately prior to COVID and every all the lockdown. Um, get on the road again, and to be you know doing our first proper tour since uh, COVID hit is in the states. How fantastic is that? And, and to go right along with it, I mean, you guys have created the official anthem for the 2022 Commonwealth Games. I mean, champion is, I mean, and the lyrics are just just fit right into it perfectly. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> did you design it to be exactly that? I mean, did I mean was it was there some sort of a they approach you or you approach them saying, hey, look, we've got we've got an idea? Well, we we were actually uh, asked to contribute a track for the Birmingham 2022 festival, which is connected to the games. Um, so we, uh, I was already writing a song with an eye on the games anyway. So when we were asked to do that tune, we wrote a song about, um, champion and it was, uh, yeah, we had an eye on the games. We didn't know that it would get, uh, it would get used for that. But when we heard that, uh, they chosen it as the official anthem for the games that was uh it couldn't be any better and i mean i wrote a, i think a verse and a chorus and i gave it to matt and uh he wrote another verse and then we added the uh the rapper guys you know gilly and uh, daps and it all came together beautifully you know and uh yeah, it absolutely sums up what the Commonwealth Games are about, really. Or all games, you know, the competition, finding out what you're good at and trying to be the best at it. See, I'm glad you said that because it, all games, meaning it could be the business world, it could be something with, with chefs and artists and stuff like that. Because, I mean, the lyrics, you have the power and speed with the will to lead. That that sits inside your heart. You're going, yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's literally could apply to to any field, uh, any creative thing as well, you know. Um, really, it's about yeah, finding out what you can what you can do and trying to be the best at it. When when you guys went into the studio to work out UB forty five, which is a celebration of the sights and sounds of everything you guys have put together, what is it like to go back into those tapes and the you know, into that music? Because I mean, is it, because music constantly evolves. Did did you feel the same thing? Yeah, we we haven't touched any of the original masters or anything. Good. It's just that we that taking Matt on board um, as our new vocalist. He's been working. Uh, well, we have been working on old songs anyway for live performance, and um, he just does them so well that we thought it would be a lovely idea to revisit some of those classics when we're celebrating the forty-five years to re- revisit and re-record some of those earlier classics would be uh, you know a real nice fun thing to do as well as writing just always writing new material which is what we like to do um and yeah matt sounds so good singing our old stuff that we thought it would be a, a nice idea matt did you always feel like that you were a member of this band i mean from from the very beginning yeah. it's like yeah I, I feel like i should be there yeah, I was I was imagining that I was a member of UB40 from when I was like three or four years old. Like, um, I've I've always been a huge fan, and um, yeah, it's it's wicked that I'm going to be able to hear my voice singing on the on the tunes. Well, the one thing that I've taken note of with these live crowds, they seem to be more activated. They're not just sitting in the seats anymore. It's because it's almost like something was taken away from the fan, and they're going whoa, 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 never again. Let's 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 make this a big celebration. <laughs> yeah, well, we've never we've never had seated audiences, and if they are seated audiences, we usually beg them to get up and dance. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> we can't stand playing to a, a seated audience, and 
you know, at, the plan is always to get people up and dancing and singing along. You know, it's it's a party atmosphere that we try to generate. It's we have that much fun on stage. We expect and demand that our audience does the same. One of the things that you guys have done is you've created your own identity. I mean, it's just amazing how you fit right in with everything that moved us right through the 80s and 90s, right up here into this new millennium. Well, that's just that's just following what you love, you know, follow your heart musically, follow what you love to do. Try not to follow any fashions, just do what you do. And hopefully everyone else will come along with you. You know, uh, that's all we've ever done. We've never tried to we've never tried to please anybody we've never tried to make music for the fans we've always made music for ourselves mm. and hoped that the fans would come along with us and they they always have done we've got an incredible uh following an incredibly loyal following you know and uh it, it's constantly growing i'm always amazed at how many young people come to our shows when you, when you come into the, the Carolinas and things like that, do you get to go explore? Because, I mean, being in the Asheville area, I mean, we're talking about the Biltmore State. We're talking about so many different precious places of the Carolinas. Will, will you guys get to, you know, explore the mountains and stuff? Possibly. I, I guess Matt, Matt might do because I'm in the States. So, uh, yeah. yeah, he's going to be a bit like a tourist, I would imagine. <laughs> he'll he'll want to he'll wanna have a look at stuff, you know. But uh, when you've been touring for 40 years, I don't know, it kind of... Uh, you kind of end up feeling comfortable in venues, you know, and uh, and hotels, and you have to find a way of doing it so that you you don't exhaust yourself, you know, in the first few weeks. How so, do you? Yeah, especially when you get to my age, you have to be a bit more careful <laughs> about what you do for entertainment, you know. No, I totally get that because it takes a little bit longer to get over everything. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Traveling with the Whalers, Maxi Priest, and Big Mountain. I mean, this right here is 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 a moment in music history. Are you guys going to document so we can hold on to it? I'm sure there'll be uh, I'm sure there'll be recordings uh, on social media. You know, we we always carry uh, recordings with us and and put them up on social media. So yeah, there'll be live stuff going on. But what a, what a great lineup, you know. And we've worked with the Whalers many times. We've obviously worked with Maxi. Uh, many times we've recorded with Maxi. Um, we know him well, you know. The only guys we don't know are Big Mountain. So looking forward to meeting them guys. And I just think it's a it's a great lineup. If if uh, if you're into reggae, then it's it's a night you can't miss. I've talked with them many times, so I'll send you all the interviews. Okay, so you can be up to date. <laughs> <laughs> so let the, the horn section of UB40. My God, I mean, I mean, historians have got to say that you have your own wall of sound. Yeah, and I mean that's principally down to our late saxophone player Brian Travers, who passed away last year, sadly. Um, but he, you know, when we started, there was just him, just the sax player, you know, uh, and our first album had only saxophone on it. But he was the one who dreamed of a horn section. And uh, yeah, we, we built a horn section. First of all, we recruited a couple of members of the band to play horns, yeah. uh, which was kind of difficult. It kind of dropped them in the deep end because they weren't obviously weren't horn players, but uh, they learned parts that Brian taught them. Um, but then we, yeah, we got a horn section together. And the guys that we have now have been with us for nearly 30 years. Matt, this, you, he mentioned that this was the first time you're coming to the United States. Is Are there any high expectations that you're looking for or anything like that? Um, not really. I think I'm just I'm just really excited to just see everything, really. Um, you know, Central Park. Oh, man. All these places that I've, I've always wanted to go to. Um, but not just wanted to go to, you know, wanted to go there playing music and um yeah you know central park um hollywood bowl like all these places that <laughs> but you're so yeah. right about you're so right about that especially hollywood bowl i've sat in those seats i mean it there there is a moment that takes place when that band hits that sound oh my god matt <laughs> yeah i can't i can't wait for i can't wait to see people's faces you know and um i can't wait I can't wait for these guys to see my face when we walk out on stage. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the things that people, the, the average listener always associates reggae, reggae music with the Caribbean and stuff like that. How did reggae get get kicked off right there in, in Birmingham? 
well, we have a high immigrant population in Birmingham, nice. uh, especially from from the Caribbean. Um, so, right from uh, as long as I can remember, I've been hearing Jamaican pop music before it was even reggae. You know, uh, when it was ska, yeah, um, I was hearing that. Uh, everywhere I went, you know, at school, at, uh, in the youth clubs, in coffee bars, and then later in the pubs and clubs, you know, um, and literally on the streets, you could hear Jamaican music everywhere. So we grew up on it, you know, and when reggae was formed, uh, when it became reggae in the late 60s, um, it just became the music we all loved. And all of the band all come from the same area. We grew up on the same streets. We hung out together wow. from when we were kids, you know. So that was the music that we grew up on. It wasn't strange to us. Obviously, that if you travelled outside of our area, then reggae wasn't so popular, you know. Um, but where we were, it was the most popular music, I would say. So many bands start in the garage. Did you guys have your garage days? We had a cellar. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, underneath underneath the um, the apartments of uh, Brian, our sax player, and Earl, the bass player, they both lived in uh, flats in in a, a large Victorian house, and we took over the cellar without the landlord's knowledge and uh, set up the band down there and rehearsed for about six months down there. So what is it like for you guys to to own the song Red Red Wine and then people discover that Neil Diamond actually started that but you guys are the ones that put that baby on the map. Yeah, well, we didn't even know it was a Neil Diamond song <laughs> when, when when we covered it. We really didn't. Um we knew the version by um there was a version by Jimmy James and the Vagabonds and there was a version by Toe. Uh, one was an R&B version and one was a reggae version. Uh and when we covered it, we thought we were covering the reggae version and had no idea until we found out through the publishing, you know, that uh, N Diamond was credited. And we were going, that must be Negus Diamond or somebody, you know. <laughs> we had we had no idea. And then, of course, people were saying, uh, you know, asking us why we covered a Neil Diamond song. And, uh, you know, it was uh, it was all new to us, really. <laughs> when when music that you create inside the studio is carried then to the listeners, what is it like to go through the fact that you're about ready to hit 45 years? I mean, it, does it shock you that music lasts that long and continues to grow? It it shocks me that we've lasted that long. It, uh, the, that we still have such a strong and faithful fan base. You know, uh, I don't think anybody imagines that they're going to have the kind of success and 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 uh you know what's the word for as long as we have uh, for 45 years i don't think anybody expects that i'm sure the stones didn't expect to be still you know making music when they were 80 you know <laughs> but uh i guess if you've if you hit the right note uh people and you you keep making a music that people can relate to and identify with then um, you know, you can keep doing it. We've discovered you can keep doing it. But uh, I think we probably expected about 10 years when we started, you know. This is going to age me, but I mean, I remember dropping the needle on the UB40 albums. And I mean, you just you just always experienced the deep cuts. I love your deep cuts because it, it, it's part of the escape. And, and, it, and it really is an, an adventure when you go into the deeper cuts. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's what the music was all about for us in, in the 70s when we formed the band. We we not only loved reggae, but we loved the production. We loved mm -hmm. the dub, you know, and uh, and for us, it was an essential part of the music. Um, it's a it's a studio art a thing that happens in the studio. But we also like reproducing it on stage, you know, Uh <laughs> Yeah, that's that's very much part of the music for us. But don't you love being right there in that studio when imaginations are coming together at the birth of the song? I mean, it just it just seems like there's a, a level of creativity that is so high. It's such a rush. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the other buzz, you know, playing live music is is one side of it. But the other thing that, you know, that I love as a musician is is to work in the studio um working in the studio is the most creative thing mm -hmm. that gives me the most satisfaction but then once i've created something you know once the band has done something something new 
the one thing you want to do is get it out there and play it to your your uh, your fans. You know, not just play them the record, but to go and play them live and see their reaction and get their approval. You know, there are two very different mediums. One is one is the studio, and the other one is live, and both of them are essential for us. When when you put together a song. I can't help falling in love. And you know Elvis had his success with it. But I'm a, I'm a mobile entertainer. I've been there out there for 29 years. And that song still resonates in people's lives. Your version really brings people together. Yeah, and it's apparently it's one of the most popular um, first dance wedding. That's it. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> Uh, which uh, you know, I mean, it's another thing that was just pure serendipity. Really, we we were asked to do that tune for uh, for a movie. We were asked to do an Elvis tune for a movie that was using Elvis music as the soundtrack on the movie. Uh, Honeymoon in Vegas was the film. Yeah, and in in the end, it never got used <laughs> um, because we were so, as usual, we were so late present you know producing the track and sending it to them that they'd already put the soundtrack together so uh they didn't use it um which of course they regretted later because when we did release it it went number one in 30 countries so oh <laughs> but uh yeah that was a, it that was not our choice we actually were asked to do that you know which uh how we how could we possibly know that our version would become so popular? Oh my God! I was that jock on the radio. The phones just endlessly just would not stop. Everybody wanted to hear it, wanted to hear it, and then you'd play it, and they'd say, "We'll do it again." They they didn't understand the the radio station format. P- play it again. <laughs> <laughs> how has streaming uh, become a part of your success? Because we all went through that that stage with streaming, where it was like, "What is this? Why are they doing it?" But now it seems to be a partner. Yeah, well, the whole industry has changed, hasn't it? it uh, you know, you don't sell records in numbers anymore. People stream, you know, mm-hmm. people download and uh, they don't even buy whole albums anymore. They they sort of cherry pick tracks that they like off albums and, and maybe take two or three tracks from the latest album by somebody. Um, and that's become the way to go now. It's uh, It doesn't make, it doesn't make the same money for the artist that selling records used to so that's kind of um you know changed the industry dramatically i think the i think eventually the artist will get uh, you know rewarded better as streaming continues and the deals change i think artists will probably start to get better reward for their work but i think uh, we're back to you know essentially being out on the road and, and earning money on the road as, as traveling minstrels. <laughs> Absolutely. And that means buy the merchandise when you go to the concert, September 4th in Asheville at Salvage Station. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buy the merch. <laughs> <laughs> Please come back to this show anytime in the future, you two. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Well, you be brilliant yeah, today. Thank you.